What is up everyone? I hope everybody had a great Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever holiday or winter holiday that you celebrate right before New Year's. It's not New Year's Eve and New Year's Day yet, but this might be my last video for 2020. Um, I know I haven't showed you my Christmas haul video and that's because Santa pretty much just gave me money this year and instead of buying things online and through my local hobby shop which I might still do uh, I wanted to buy you know check out a couple of ho hobby shops while I'm on vacation um, one we went to the Branson Hobby Center because we're up in Branson Missouri and they had some pretty cool stuff there I ended up getting me a box car and a couple of covered hoppers and I will show those on a later video um, and then we are planning on going to Iron Planet Hobbies in Springfield, Missouri and checking them out, which happens to be Heath's uh, from Humanity Junction, his sponsor. And so I'm hoping to maybe buy something from up there too. And if I don't, then I'll probably just end up buying something from my local hobby shop. So, um, but today I wanted to share with you our build process on um, a building kit that we're going to use for the uh, shack of sit that's right shack of sit furniture company that's going to be on level two on the layout now if you notice we're not in the um the, the lay the train room or what heath likes to call my kill room which is my office um because it's painted red but we are actually in our camper because we're camping as a family this week on, while we're on vacation. So kind of cramped space here, but you know, me and Train Freak Jr. here are excited to work on this building together and kind of show you our progress. So before we get to it, I always want to remind all my viewers to... And make sure you fill in the bell. You know, come on, you got to get your dings going. There we Sorry. go. You're slacking over there, Train Freak Jr. And, you know, that, that way you can receive future notification on all my videos. Um, and, you know, whether it's, you know, these how-tos like building kits, scenery stuff that I'm not real strong at, but I'm just trying to show you how I do things my way. Sometimes I will do how-tos on... Some, you know, locomotive decoder installs, which is my stronger suit, um, which I've got quite a few of those to do, I found out. I had a customer drop off a whole slew of them. And, um, you know, even things such as my layout updates that I try to do weekly and, you know, sidetrack Sunday. And then, of course, all my contests that I like to hold because I always like to give back to y'all for what y'all giving to me. And speaking of, thank you to the extended supporters of my channel that have you know, signed on through my Patreon, which, you know, is a minimum of one dollar a month, um, you know, to to help fund some of these things such as uh, content for the channel and for, you know, the prizes for the contest, which is that's more or less where it's going to. And then also thank you to those who have actually bought uh, some pretty cool swag off my Teespring store um, and um, which I plan on trying to get some Train Freak Junior stuff on there too. Um, hopefully I can get, get involved with that here in the next couple of weeks or so. And for those who have even just sent one-time donations on my PayPal.me. And if you're interested in doing any of that, the descriptions are in the link below. So you can just easily do every bit of that. So enough with me chattering, I guess. Um, let's uh, let's get to the actual building kit, what it looks like, and what our plans are. So, sorry, I gotta cover your face up. This is the Walders Cornerstone <laughs> Heritage Kit. He's giving me the evil eye back here. I can sense it. Um, this is what I'm using for Shaka Sit. And what I really like about this, this is a backdrop building. Um, whoa. Yeah, I've already opened the plastic and I'll explain why. Is that the box cars actually kind of go up under the building, which I thought was really cool. And so I am going to light this building up, and which I do not have the LED lights with me, but I do plan on lighting it. 
And I'm thinking about even lightning under this roof here above where the box cars would go. Thinking about it. Not 100 on it yet, but I'm thinking about it. Um, but the main thing that we went ahead and did was we went ahead and painted just the base coat, uh, you know, to get a color idea of what we wanted to do with it. And my wife, um, Amanda, she was actually the one who picked out the colors. I kind of gave her an idea, but she actually went and picked the actual colors out, which was awesome to get her involved in some form or fashion. But we, you know, we had to go ahead and at least paint the inside of the buildings, and that's a, to prevent the light bleed because with Walder's kits, you try to put lighting on the inside, you get light, you know, it looks like the walls are glowing, and a real building does not do that. So, so let me show you what colors we went, went ahead and did. Uh, we went ahead and painted all of the window structures here, and this also includes things as the doors, the handrails, you know, if you're going up a step or something. And this color, Aaron, I'll let you hold that. So that way you can see. And I will tell you, this looks brighter on this part of the camera, and I think it has to do with my ring light, but this is a really dark red. Um, you can get this at Walmart. This is Rust-Oleum, and this is a satin, and it's called Colonial Red. Um, I think Lowe's or Home Depot carries this brand as well. But um, it's a real, real deep, dark red, and um, she thought that would stand out really good because you didn't want anything like a really bright red so it will help make the building pop um, it does seem brighter on here especially when I move it up closer yeah it's pretty bright on here so um, but we went ahead and painted both the fronts and the back on these sprues here and what we will end up doing before we start gluing is we will take our hobby knife and I'm going to use the back side and just kind of set it straight up on top and slide it side by side where we're not at an angle. And it will actually help whoops, peel off some of the paint. And the one I was working on was this one here. So, and I mean, you can see the paint on my, my brush. You don't want to go at an angle because then you could actually damage the piece. So you want to kind of, you want to be perpendicular to it and you just slide it back and forth and it just slowly scrapes that layer away so that way you still got paint where you want it but you don't have paint where you don't need it and when you try to glue these together if you got paint there the glue is just not going to hold so hey that's a tip from the train freak so as far as like the bay doors I mean we still got a good I think it would be like this. This would be like for an 18-wheeler truck, and then this one's going to be for the actual boxcar. Now, because this is a backdrop building, there are a lot of pieces on here that we're not going to use, but it's just much easier just to go ahead and spray paint everything on the spur at once than trying to cut them out and, you know, paint them individually, blah, 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 blah. So, all right, as far as the next color, uh, the roof, I didn't paint the top, but I did paint the bottom and the base I painted the top because that's just how it was on the sprue but this is the bottom of the roof it is a just a standard flat black that's all it is flat black nothing impressive <sighs> all right sleepy you better wake up Shine. and I know I know I'm boring you right now and I'm probably boring y'all too but I just I at least want to give you this information um, but the cool thing about this building, if you see these grooves in here, you don't necessarily have to cut a straight rectangle. Uh, the grooves are designed so that way, um, if you wanted to angle your building along the backdrop, you can actually cut that angle out and then say, this piece here is not going to exist. And then this piece here is touching your backdrop and that's touching your backdrop and your building's kind of angled and offset. That, that's an option with this building kit, which I think is really cool. This is just the base. Um, but we did go ahead and paint it flat black just to prevent light bleed. We did the same thing on the back side of the walls. 
So this is the back side. This is the front side. The front side we went ahead and painted a Rust-Oleum camouflage. And this is the khaki color. Now, of course, it doesn't say khaki on the can, or I have yet to find it. Uh, the only place that it shows where it says khaki is you have to go to the barcode back here on the back and it says khaki. So, and I think that's just how Rust-Oleum's camo colors are. So, this is a khaki. And we're actually going to, well, this is actually the right way. That's your truck bay and this is where the box cars would go in and out. Um, so, this is actually um, just the base coat. We're going to add more color to it. So... Don't worry, and that we might show a little bit on camera how we do that. Um, but that's really where we're at now. So as far as gluing these together, let me get the lights and stuff out of the way. Um, first, you definitely need some of these to cut them apart. And if you're wondering, my black spray paint kind of messed up on me yesterday. So I got droplets of black on my hand. I can't get it off. Um, so my hand looks like a Dalmatian, but it only got on my hand. Um... You get plastic weld or plastic cement of some type that will kind of, you know, hold it and melt your joints together. But it does not work on paint, so make sure you scrape your paint off first. Only in the areas that you're going to do that. I like to use one of these. This is a, it's just a magnetic tray from Micromark, and they've got it to where these are, you know, 90 degree corners, so you can put your building pieces in there and then just use these super strong magnets to just to hold it up in place while your glue is setting um, works really really great um, and then of course behind the windows we're going to slap some light diffusing window film and I got this from the Branson Hobby Center and it was like 18 bucks so um, it's basically so that way when I put the light in there, we can't really, I don't have to worry about detailing the inside of the building. Uh, the backdrop buildings, I think, do not have a back to it. So I might have to get some styrene later and slap a back on it. But um, as far as the lighting goes, I definitely want to have the inside of it lit. You know, the uh, second, I don't know how many floors, second, third, and fourth floor. And then also install some lighting over the you know the the bay area and i might install some lighting on the outside like lamp fixtures and stuff later down the road haven't thought too far into that part yet okay so as far as the exterior paints um what we got here is we've got a design so we wanted to kind of add a little gray or to make it look like uh kind of like a granite type color here and in the two boxes and then the cinder blocks here, we wanted to give kind of like a different shade. So, um, Aaron's got four, technically five different paints here, but we got one paint in case if we mess something up, we can, uh, you know, hopefully get it corrected without having to use that whole rattle can again. So, Aaron, um, what colors do we have here for uh, the paints? And you got to make sure you show it to them. We got light matcha. Mocha. Mocha. Sorry, I'm kind of a terrible name reader, sort of. Alright, so we got a light mocha. And we got um, sun-kissed peach. Ooh, sun-kissed peach. Okay. Yeah, I know the glare of the light is not it's helping. The direction. It was, um, and we also got a country gray. Country gray. That's going to be one of our options for the granite, maybe, or it could be the block, the cinder blocks. And I think this is a dove gray? Dove. Dove gray? Yeah, dove. And that's a different brand. This is one that I actually picked up at, um, this one I picked up at Michael's. And these four here I picked up at um, Walmart. And the, the fifth color that Aaron didn't tell you about is, it's just a standard khaki. So, and it sounds like uh, our neighbors are getting pretty active out there. I don't know if you can hear them in the background or not, but it's, it's cool if you can. And if you can't, hey, that's even cool too. So, um, I think what we're going to go ahead and start doing now is we're going to go ahead and start trying to get our pieces together and go ahead and get some gluing done. 
before we start doing the actual main or paint touch-ups, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to get to that and then we will be back here shortly. Okay, so we got one side put together and I mean to me this looks really really good and with the red it just kind of really pops out and one of the things I went ahead and did was I put the diffusing film on the back and it does have a tint but if I hold this up to the light like that you can see where the light goes through it just fine and of course as soon as we take it off the light it gets dark again which is really really neat so well that's one side down now I got three more to do and one side is like two of these so um, I think I might go ahead and try to get a little freak to start painting uh, some of this one and with some of those colors we mentioned earlier so uh, we'll be back all right so I went ahead did the basic painting of it and of course the sections that are going to be glued together I will have to scrape paint off but there's not really going to be any on here so this is the front of course the two sides and this is going to be that's the front of it of course I've also painted the uh, base section which sits behind these pillars here um, and then as far as my painting goes um, Aaron or train freak jr. helped me you know with the uh, concrete squares and stuff on here and I know it's not perfect but hey from a distance it looks amazing and I did some touch-up paint with this uh, khaki and it was not the same color as the original khaki of the spray paint that I put on there. So I basically had to go in and repaint everything. But what I did was I left br brush strokes on purpose. And that with that that two shades of khaki, Rust-Oleum's khaki and this Apple Barrel khaki, it kind of gives a good little weathering effect on there and you can see where I did it there as well I went ahead and painted um, so all the concrete stuff or granite whatever you want to call it the transoms above and below the windows the two squares I used this um, dove gray um, and then as far as the you know, I already showed you the khaki as far as the background goes. Um, as far as the actual bricks, I used a mix and I just randomly did it. And there was no set pattern, but I used a uh, light mocha, sun kissed peach. There we go, sun kissed peach, and country gray. And if you're asking as to which ones are which, um, if we go here, the uh, lighter one right there, that is that sun kissed peach, and these three here is the uh, light mocha. And you probably saw a blemish there, but I'm not going to worry about it. So, um, I will tell you, invest in uh, not cheap paintbrushes. I mean, these things are crap, but hey, it got the job done, and I didn't feel like getting out and going buying any more paintbrushes. So... Um, I think that's really all the only other pieces that need to be painted right now. Um, I know there's going to be some corner pieces to go here and here. And I'll probably go ahead and get those glued on first before I start painting those. So, Alright, well, I um, think I'm going to go ahead and start gluing things together and I will be back with y'all later. Okay, so I wanted to share something that... Trying to put this kit together, I have been getting frustrated, and that's because Walters has given me the wrong instructions. Their instructions are freaking backwards. Let me explain. 
up here these instructions and these instructions talk about you get your pieces two which is the front three four and piece eight which is this piece here and it is talking about go ahead and glue in all your windows and the backings and whatnot get it all glued together before you start gluing walls to each other so i did that even went as far as installing the uh, film tape to go on the um, the back of the windows or the the light you know the light diffusing film from woodland scenics because i plan on adding lights in here so i did all that and as the instruction says then it gets down here to step 10. It says glue the walls 2, 3, 4, and 8. 2 is the front, 3 and 4 are the sides, and 8 is also the front, but it's where the bay is. It kind of offsets inwards. And glue 3, 4, and 8 to the base. I'm like, okay. So I start trying to figure out how to do that. And I ran into the issues that the walls would not glue together because the windows were touching each other. So I was like, that's fine. I'll just pop the windows off of the sides. So I've done that. Okay. Then I start trying to add this little under roof piece here to create some extra stability. Um, you know, to make it easier because it's just much easier if you add, instead of adding one here, one there, and one there, and now you got two walls that are unstable. You might as well just find another step and add something in there to make it stable like I have done. Did that. Well, when I did that, everything was off kelter. It was not, not sized properly. I'm like, well, what the hell's going on? Let's fast forward reading a little bit further. Part 6. That's step 12. Glue the end pilaster 6 to the corners of the walls and glue the inner pieces 14 to the backs of them. Okay. Well, check this out. I left either, this is 3 or 4. That looks like it lines up pretty well, right? Which is unpainted. Went ahead, glued the bottom piece in like so. Now, I'm going to zoom in on the other side wall and... Two. I'm going to zoom in at that corner right there. What part of walls three and four are touching part two with these corner pilasters? The key is they're not. They were never supposed to be glued together. So Walders failed and gave this instruction 10 all wrong. I thought I would share that with you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and now since I know this, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't get the rest of this Put back together get the window pieces which are right here glued back on after i get it put back together and see if i can't figure out what the heck is going on here and hopefully i can get these corners painted and call this project done well besides adding the light um as far as the lighting goes um i'm i've I'm thinking about adding it underneath. I'm going to see if I can lift this up without breaking it. So this is what the building looks like. So there is... I don't know if you can see it or not. But that other piece I added on there is the roof. Yeah, we can't really see it. Um, i got to be very, very gentle. Because I don't want to break it. Alright, so there's a roof there. So I was thinking about putting LED lights on that. And then as far as lighting the interior portion of the building, yeah, we got to be very, very gentle. Very, very gentle. So, okay, so you can see the underneath of the roof now. That would be this piece here. Um, as far as adding the other light, should I put it here on the top? This piece here is supposed to go get my hand out of the way right in there somehow i might just add the light back on here on the back side of these doors so that way the light will kind of project back and then outward i think that might be the best bet but the cool thing is is this is where the box cars are supposed to go which there's one door for receiving and one door for shipping 
which I thought was pretty neat. So, and they should hold two 50 footers. But, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't try to get this finished up. Front looks very, very good. So, in my opinion. Especially with the uh, bricks being off colors. So, alright, well, I'll be back. Stay tuned. Well, here is the finished product. This is going to be the Shackaset Furniture Company. Give you a, you know, flat level look. Um, there'll be a track that will come in here. And one side will be receiving, the other side will be shipping. I can even put 18 wheelers off to the sides. We got the bricks all in different colors. Well, it's actually three colors, but I already told you which ones. And as far as lighting goes, um, you can see the Christmas tree kind of through it. Um, what I'll probably end up doing is um, probably putting the lights underneath the roof. I try putting like a little flashlight, you know, behind the two bay doors. And the top two rows of light windows lit up, but that bottom row did not light up at all and on the sides it kind of had a 45 degree angle so there was definitely a shadow cast on it so i'll probably just have to install the lighting at, on the roof and then i will more than likely install lighting under here as well so all right well y'all this wraps up this um walder's cornerstone kit i uh, want to remind you if you haven't subscribed to make sure you, that you do subscribe Fill in the bell so that way you can receive future notifications. Thumbs up. That helps with the YouTube's algorithms. And then, um, you know, you can always feel free to comment. And then if you do want to be an extended supporter of this channel, feel free to check out my Patreon, my Teespring, and my PayPal.me, which the links will be in the description below. Well, y'all, um, this is probably going to be my last video for 2020. So I wish everyone a happy new year. Be safe out there. Um, this this showstopper thing is not going away anytime soon, it looks like. So please be safe. And y'all have a great and fabulous rest of the week and weekend to come. Take care, everyone.